you know, recap the game on Saturday, obviously, it's really the same mindset of what I said after the game, post game. I, I think that, you know, uh, some things in the course of the football game, I thought we did very well. Some other things, very disappointed in how we executed. Um, but I will say in a lot of things, I, I think we're very close on, you know, in some rhythm on offense to find some of that consistency that we all know and love around here and, and uh, look forward to that, you know, coming uh, here soon and, and showing its head. So uh, defensively, I thought, you know, a really good second half, did a good job limiting the rushing attack in the second half, a couple of plays here and there that you wish you had back. And um, but that's the case in every football game. So, you know, the American Conference West football games, really good, tough, hard games each week. And um, it requires you know, elite execution and high level, you know, accountability when it comes to those things. And, and that's what we're searching for right now. And uh, we'll have to have that each and every week as we go forward. So, you know, excited about going up to Mount Pleasant, playing Central Michigan, Coach McElwain, his program, and uh, a lot of respect for him and, and the guys that they have on their staff and how they do it the right way. And, you know, uh, we, we know this will be a tough opponent and one that will challenge us for 60 minutes from a physicality standpoint and an execution standpoint. So got to have a great week of practice and looking forward to doing that. So that said, I'll take a question. Coming off a, a tough loss, you're three and three now. I mean, do, do you, I guess, personally or collectively as a team, like, do you want to enter this week a, a little angry, chip on your shoulder type, or do you want to just like wipe the slate clean and have optimism, and or maybe a mixture? Like, how, how do you want? To... Well, I think you know. I... I think you look at the grand scheme of things and the big picture of last year after our sixth game, our season was done and over with. And, you know, we, we went home and watched basketball season. You know, this is after six games right here where we're at now, no matter what your record is, where you're at, you know, in a lot of sense, our season's just beginning right now. And, um, you know, that's a different mindset that requires a little different uh, detail of what, what it looks like from a coaching standpoint, from a player standpoint and an execution standpoint of things. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're a competitor and a true competitor, to me, I think you always take you you, you take the losses harder than you know they're 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 tougher on you than maybe more than what the enjoyment of a win is, and you know that's certainly the case. You but you have to get off the mat. You got to keep going, and you got to look. You got to turn the page and go forward, and and uh, look what's in front of you because the teams that you that you're going to play down the road, including this one this weekend, they don't really care about what happened to you in the past. How offensively? I mean, do you think it's as simple as? the line play, a couple things going differently that you can kind of flip the switch? Or do you think there's things all over? Or? Well, I, there's – we're in a unique situation. You know, we're number one in our league in yards per play. And we're dead last in number of plays ran. You know, like, I don't know if I've been in that situation before. I haven't been in that situation before. But, uh, you know, that that – that means that every play matters, and you know, especially the, the the situational football plays, the red zone, the third downs. Those plays become heightened, and when you don't have a lot of success in those situations, there becomes a little bit more created pressure or uh, anxiety that is stirred up. And you know, it. Uh, so yeah, I think there's there's a little bit of that going on, and that's where you'd probably say, well, there's the lack of rhythm then, and you know, then okay, well. What do you have to do? You have to take a look at the videotape. And I, like I said, I think there's a lot of cases we're really close to breaking out and having a really great performance on offense on Saturday. You know, we just didn't execute in some tough moments. You know, we, you know, uh, and you got to find out why those execution, you know, those lack of execution is, is, is going on and, and fix those plays because when uh, this Saturday comes, you're going to have to make those plays. You've harped on having, I don't know, third and medium, third and long a lot. I haven't met a whole lot of third and shorts this year. What, what do you think is the, the common denominator on those first and second downs? Well, I, I, I think that, first of all, first down, you know, statistically, first down would be our highest production per yards per play, you know, through the course of the year. We've had a lot of explosive plays, a lot of big plays. Uh, second medium, you know, actually second medium might be a little bit higher than first down. First down would be maybe second. Um, the second longs, the third and longs, those will be our, our least productive down in distances. And that's probably pretty common across the board. Um, but ours have been, you know, we've, we've compounded the problem with turning second and long and into second and longer by some penalties. We've compounded the problem by having third and seven and turning that into third and 15 because of some penalties or some self-inflicted things. We we're off on a hair on a pass protection. We don't, we're on the side of a block up front. We, uh, we're just, we're just off. And, uh, you know, there's only way to, to get on is to continue to practice really hard and continuing to put our guys in those situations. And we got to continue to do that. So, um, you know, when you have success, you have rhythm. 
you know, just like in life, when you have success, you have confidence. And, you know, your, your confidence and aura about yourself as a human being is better when you have success because there's your rhythm. And, uh, you know, we don't, we're not having that a little bit at times throughout the course of the game. It's hard to continue to stay in there as a young 18 to 22-year-old person, but you have to. you got to keep playing. Not every game in college football, very rarely any of them, are blowouts. Um, and less and less are there 40 to 42 games, you know, like, there's tough, hard fought football games that are going to have to be won 23 to 20. They're going to have to be won 28 to 26. Uh, they're going to have to be won 17 to 10. Some of these games are like this. And, you know, you can't cry over spilled milk in the second and third quarter when you have to go make the plays in the fourth quarter. And I think Saturday, you know, when we had to get on there and get a really hard touchdown. Our guys executed when they need to execute. They, 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 we, we killed ourselves on a touchdown that got brought back, and we had third and 18. And, uh, we got nine yards back and completed a fourth and nine ball to get a first or got a pass interference on fourth and nine to get the first down. So we executed and finished the drive when things got really, really hard. And you got to look at those two and you got to take those and you got to build off of them. Uh, well, home field advantage is something. I mean, a bunch of road teams won Saturday in the MAC and the NFL, especially this year. I think it's the highest percentage road teams have ever won. Um, well, why is that kind of changing in, in football now? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. You know, there's a lot of things I think that go into that. I mean, you know, I like taking our team on the road. You know, you get a chance to get away. You get a chance to be in a hotel. You get a chance to be just around your guys. You get a chance to lock in on a game plan, wake up. There's not, you know, there's not, for the players, there's not 100 people coming into the game that you got to worry about making sure they're okay and doing what they need to do. You're just there with your teammates and you're preparing and playing football. And I think, you know, there's a lot to be said for focus, you know, and whether you're the head coach or whether you're an 18 to 22 year old person, like this game requires elite focus and you have to have it every weekend. And the, the, the more distractions you can eliminate, all right, from a, you know, a, a scheduling standpoint or more distractions you can eliminate just from a, a logistic standpoint of what you're mentioning, I think you have a, you have an advantage. You mentioned the offense struggling to find a rhythm. Going with the two quarterbacks, does that hamper finding that rhythm, or does the benefit of having both Carter and Daquan involved outweigh that? Well, I think rhythm is going to be rhythm is going to happen through execution, and you know whether the quarter it doesn't matter who the quarterback is like you got to execute, and you know like so yeah, I think it starts there. It's not a it's not a who's the quarterback thing. It's a it's an execution thing, and whichever guy goes in there and executes at a high level, like you know, that's that's who your quarterback is, you know. So you got to continue to put those guys in situations through practice. You got to evaluate the game tape on what that looks like. You know, we we can't we're not in a situation where we can sit back and drop back past 65 times and win a football game. That's not a recipe for success. It's not. So you have to stay balanced on offense. You got to be able to pick up the tough conversion downs. And, you know, I knew that I knew exactly what we were getting ourselves into last week. You know, that, that's how Northern Illinois beat Georgia Tech. You know, it was a hard fought game, very similar to ours. That Northern did a good job of keeping the ball the entire time. And Georgia Tech didn't pick up their third downs. We didn't either. You know, so this is this is about execution. You know, this is about making the hard plays when it matters, all the rhythm and all that other stuff that, you know, everybody's got the magic answer for. It, it's it's not going to it's not going to happen unless you have, you know, really good execution in situational football. You mentioned the physicality of Central Michigan. What else stands out about them? Well, I got a couple of really good playmakers in offense. Obviously, I think the running back is really good, you know, um, Khalil Pimpleton's a really good wide receiver and a dynamic threat in the slot and a good return guy. You know, a couple of playmakers on the outside, um, getting consistent play from their quarterback. Um, you know, a, a elite pass rusher and, and Harrison, a defensive end, a guy that was a player of the year in our league last year, and you know, a guy that's a, a good, good football player. Um, good at the second level at linebacker, and have some guys with some length in the secondary that will challenge you, and and will be confident in their ability. So, you know, just like each and every week, you got to go win the football game, and no one's going to hand you anything. Eli Peters is still around your program. Just what is kind of his role this season? Actually? Well, I mean, he's he's a kind of the buffering, the sounding board between you know uh, coaches and the quarterback, and you know he's a he's a unique perspective on things because he, you know, the majority of his time here in his career was spent as a backup. He's been in, was in that role and can kind of see the game from the sidelines and uh, is good at you know helping those guys throughout the course of the game. Um, you know, and then, you know, his time as a starter, 
he benefited from good, hard, intentional work and saw his completion percentage continually rise as he was a player. So he's kind of lived both sides of it. And uh, like I said, it's provided a unique you know, approach to, to helping those guys away from, away from the field, so to speak. Do you ever see a time where maybe pass interference is review reviewable? Sure. Well, you know, I, I think that uh, the only thing we can do as coaches is when a young man commits a foul and, you know, take what the referee the explanation is, do a good job of trying to get him that information that he can, uh, that he can use that information and put it to work. And I thought uh, that, you know, we've done that. And, uh, you know, to, to have a couple calls that maybe or a call that didn't go our way there and, and a pass interference deal, like, uh, it's frustrating because I think you you know you we did that we did what we needed to do and uh, that's that's what's frustrating and but it's part of football I mean officials have a hard job you know it's a it's a tough situation out there it's a bang bang play things go fast and you know you gotta coaches make mistakes officials make mistakes players make mistakes it's part of the game it's part of the human element of it and, and if we didn't have the human element part of it and everything was just replayed and everything was stop everything to look at everything. Everybody be frustrated and mad about that. I mean, we have four TV timeouts. We have three TV timeouts a quarter. Everybody's upset that every time that guy in the red hat walks out there and puts a clock up and holds it there and says, hey, you don't get to play again for four more hours. Like, everybody gets upset about that. So, you know, taking the human element out of it, I don't know if that's the answer. Uh, just you got to do a better job of, you know, of coaching the situation up and do the best job we can and, and keep playing.